This video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Hey Wisecrack, Michael here, and today we're talking about The Boys. The show is sadistic and hilarious, and has plenty to say about the superhero genre and modern day America. But as we watched season two, we kept coming back to one question. Are any of these characters for real? When Stormfront or Billy or Homelander talk about things they ostensibly care about, are they just faking it? And if so, why all the posturing? Let's find out in this Wisecrack edition on The Boys season two. And of course, spoilers ahead. But before we get into it, I want to give a shout out to this week's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. It's no secret that you don't have much privacy on the internet these days. However, there is a way that you can protect yourself online, and that is by using a VPN. A VPN sends your information through an encrypted tunnel so you can safely use your passwords without the fear of hackers stealing your information. A VPN can also protect you from targeted ads and other pesky data trackers. When you use Surfshark VPN, you can use your account on any of your devices so you know you're always protected. They have over a thousand servers in 63 countries and offer additional features. If you use the link in the description and use the promo code WISECRACK in December, you can get Surfshark VPN for 84% off its normal annual price, plus four extra months for free. Go to surfshark.deals slash wisecrack or hit the link in the description. Protect yourself online and download Surfshark VPN today. And now for a quick recap. The Boys is the story of one Billy Butcher and his crew of vigilante misfits who are trying to take down the Vought Corporation, a very evil company that employs and contracts out the services of often evil superheroes. What happens if, uh, I don't know, I do this? <laughs> and now uh, you're just another useless f blind guy. It's important to note that these superheroes aren't some happy accident, RIP to Bob Ross, but the result of Vought's very secretive, definitely illegal medical experiments on children. The boys try to expose Vought and save Billy's wife and her child from their head soup, Homelander. Season two also introduces the latest Vought hero, Stormfront, who turns out to be an actual century old Nazi. Heinrich Himmler. He was a lovely dancer. If it seems like The Boys is full of people espousing disingenuous politics and posturing for the cameras, it's because the show goes to great lengths to show us how almost every character is constantly performing. After all, it's not enough to simply be a hero in this world, you have to play a hero too. Superheroes star in movies. Title card, Dawn of the Seven. Go on talk show circuits. Well, Stormfront, congrats on the seven. Are you as excited to be here as I am? I don't know, I don't think so. And even give those lame midnight religious infomercials. But thanks to the Church of the Collective, I now know the kind of man I wanna be. Hey dude, that's not cool. Heck, even when they're not on the screen, they worry about public approval ratings. So at a, I'm down a point, point and a half, two. And fastidiously try to keep their personal selves in check. Oh my God, everyone is so f***ing stage managed. Life isn't actually a PR strategy. You can say what you think. And it's not just our superheroes who are constantly putting on a show. Whether it's Becca playing house with a sociopathic Superman or Congresswoman Victoria Newman whipping her base into a frenzy, every character seems to put on a mask at one time or another. So here's the question, Wisecrack. What do you think happens when these deliberate performances collide with hot button social issues? Well, we've got a term for you, virtue signaling. Now, before you smash that dislike button, hear me out. Virtue signaling is a term that gets thrown around to suggest that people are disingenuously engaging with social issues, not out of genuine concern, but to promote their own self image. While it's certainly a real phenomenon, it's basically become a catch-all term to call anyone who cares about anything a fraud. One might say that even my discussion of virtue signaling is in itself some kind of signal of virtue about how wise I am in an effort to make wisecrack seem tray woke. And then if you get mad at that and tweet about it, your righteous indignation could itself be some virtue signaling to your impassioned fans. The point is, it's very easy to call just about anything virtue signaling. And it's also often, but not always, a lazy and incoherent argument. And it's confusing because we live in a world where we don't trust anyone to stand for anything for the right reasons. And The Boys takes this confusion head on. 
The Boys is centrally concerned not with how ordinary people display their support of social issues, but how corporations do. In turn, it explores how ordinary people end up consuming information about those ideas. In season one, for instance, Vought rebrands their hero, Starlight, as a feminist icon. She transforms! Embraces her feminine strength. Goodbye, Yellow Brick Road! And hello, Starlight! Except, well, their brand of female empowerment through sexuality isn't exactly what the budding superhero had in mind. Vought doesn't care. They're more concerned with the image of an empowered woman that people can also ogle than, you know, actually empowering anyone. Most importantly, it tells the story of your transformation, of what you're going through. How exactly do you know what I'm going through? Exactly. AKA virtue signaling. The Starlight rebranding helps their bottom line rather than any feminist cause. A similar conflict happens in season two. Homelander maliciously outs Queen Maeve. Who in the seven is gay? Queen Maeve. Revealing her ex-girlfriend, whom Maeve is then forced to pretend is her current lover. Vought reimagines Maeve's forced outing in their film Dawn of the Seven as a wholesome coming out story, complete with a cliched love interest in the form of a counterculture computer hacker. I'm afraid to, to show the world who I am. Yeah? So who are you, Maeve? I'm gay. After establishing Maeve as a queer icon, Vought capitalizes on it to sell like this. Brave Maeve pride box, because you can't be proud on an empty stomach. It's worth noting that while Maeve bars are sadly fictitious, this whole using someone's identity for profit is a fairly common advertising strategy. While your head of digital marketing may genuinely care about, say, racism, their message is still getting filtered through the lens of what's going to make us money. As a result, most companies only support social issues after they become massively popular and therefore safe. Like how shampoo conglomerate L'Oreal posted about standing with the black community this summer, despite, oh right, apparently ending their partnership with a model in 2017 because she spoke out against white supremacy. And filtering social issues through the lens of profit isn't just massively annoying. It can actively harm people. Take Maeve's sexuality. You know Maeve is bi, right? Yeah, you know what? I just feel like lesbian is a bit of an easier sell, but more cut and dry. Clearly Vought's preoccupation with gay rights is just another sales tactic, not an earnest means of celebrating Maeve for who she actually is. The company then tries to overhaul the image of Maeve's pretend partner, Elena, so she can better conform to the stereotype of what a lesbian should look like. That looks like menswear. Pew research shows that two feminine women in a relationship sends a problematic message. This is the danger of virtue signaling as marketing strategy. It puts a corporate friendly face on social causes, thus obscuring the actual reality. People are then bombarded with images that reinforce the big business version of reality. And this sort of corporate do-gooding often provides a useful and deliberate distraction from a given business's less savory practices. This is well documented in Fran Hawthorne's Ethical Chic. In Vought's case, all the feminism and gay pride distracts people from the reality that the company is a private military contractor with a less than stellar human rights record. In this way, we might better appreciate the boys' most glorious jab at Marvel. For context, in season two, Vought is going all in on female empowerment with their new PR campaign, Girls Get It Done. Can you tell us a little about how Girls Get It Done? Girls Get It Done. Girls Get It Done. Girls Get It Done. The idea is that since there have never been three women in the seven before, now's the time to cash in on not being sexist anymore. But for all the congratulatory talk, female empowerment is pretty much the exact opposite of what Vought is actually about. For starters, its newest film, The Dawn of the Seven, isn't exactly concerned with portraying realistic female characters. You write all women as either unknowable Hitchcock bitches or Michael Bay dolls. I mean, I get that a lifetime of jerking off to Transformers didn't exactly make you popular with the ladies, but um, a little effort would be nice. That's a literal Nazi saying this. And it's not like the company has embraced girl power off the screen either. Recall our coerced into spandex Starlight. I'm fine with my old outfit. We're not. All of which brings us to that Marvel scene. To summarize, there is one very notable moment in Avengers Endgame when Peter Parker asks Captain Marvel how she plans to get past the incoming onslaught of Badman. In response, the Scarlet Witch and Okoye pop in and say, Don't worry, she's got help. As more female heroes swoop in to help. When I saw it, tons of kids went ape 
because Marvel was finally letting their female heroes shine. But for more jaded adults, this all felt a little forced, exactly the kind of corporate feminism that we've become wary of. And The Boys seems to agree, mimicking Marvel's scene in The Dawn of the Seven. How are you gonna get through all of them? Don't worry. Girls get it done. Much like Vought celebrates their girls get it done after years of being a total boys club, Marvel's scene is a weird victory lap for a company that waited a whole decade before putting out its first standalone female superhero film, Captain Marvel, which also happens to be a movie that many have called a thinly veiled recruitment tool for the Air Force. You're so cool. <laughs> <laughs> and that's not by accident. The US military has often exerted editorial influence over movies like Top Gun or Captain Marvel in exchange for access to sick tanks and planes. The result? A scrappy but not too rough around the edges hero who can be turned both into a toy line and an advertisement for the US military. That spirit of her, that sense of humor mixed with total capability and whatever challenge comes her way is really what Air Force pilots are like. The kind of hero who would never ever do something like kick a person while they're down and yell Nazi See, in the brand safe virtue signaling realm of corporate social justice, everything has to play well with a large audience. And so all the corporations who sponsor pride parades want to ignore that the first pride was actually a riot incited by police brutality, or how those who vaguely stand against hate on Instagram never want to go into the details about what that actually means. But The Boys does. It looks like this. Three women giving a bloody beatdown to a literal Nazi. Girls do get it done. Also, congrats Marvel, you've been roasted. Now, a common problem with the way the word virtue signaling gets thrown around is that the term seems exclusively used against the left. So a sensible question would be, is virtue signaling confined to the liberal sphere? And the answer to that is, absolutely not. We just don't usually think about it in those terms. Uh, to see what I mean, let's look at the king of conservative virtue signaling himself, Homelander. If virtue signaling is the invocation of issues or values out of self-interest rather than genuine concern, then this is Homelander's patriotism to a T. The dude does not give a about America or American citizens, but he goes to great lengths to seem like he has a raging hard on for the troops in the land of the free. Oh, and uh, you guys. You are the real heroes. Not only that, our sociopathic soup is very careful to invoke all those cheesy patriotic platitudes when addressing crowds. And introduce it to a little thing called God's judgment. That's what I think. Sounds like the American thing to do. This rhetoric, we might add, is common to all politicians, but especially those on the right. But if you've served with our amazing soldiers like I have, you would know that freedom comes at a price. Of course, this is the same guy who downed a whole airliner of American civilians before casually flying off and letting them sink to their watery graves. To see how shallow all this patriotic posturing really is, you need only to look at what gets Homelander upset. Not the deaths of innocent Americans, but rather those rare moments when he isn't showered with love and adoration. For example, when people come after Homelander for accidentally killing an innocent bystander, we see the strongest man in America break down hard. Of course, Homelander isn't alone when it comes to virtue signaling via patriotism. Vought is arguably just as bad. On one hand, the company churns out pro-military ads like this one. We're proud to fly alongside them. And now we could use your support. That's right, Maeve, with our new campaign, Saving America. Sort of like that Captain Marvel ad, right? On the other hand, as Stormfront so rightly points out, it's all a farce. Oh, FYI, not a real base. See, like Homelander, Vought isn't interested in actual national security or supporting the troops. All they're interested in is those sweet, sweet military contracts. And there is only one company that has the product to fight back. And to that end, Vought does everything from blackmail sitting senators to imprisoning and experimenting on innocent civilians with Compound V. Real good job keeping America safe. There's also a kind of Christian virtue signaling. You know, pastors who get rich and famous for signaling to the world how much they love Jesus, even if they're sleazebags. Who preaches all that pray the gay away? No, he's the meat and the man bitch. Like that. And finally, there's what I call authenticity signaling. 
which is all about broadcasting how real you are, as best embodied by Stormfront. Be a bitch if you want. Be whatever. Just drop the mask once in a while. Feels good. Of course, her persona is also carefully crafted, meant to rile up her base for her own gross ends. But because she defines herself in opposition to her squeaky clean heroes, her own performance of realness finds a receptive audience. As if Homelander and uh, Maeve are gonna eat MREs and uh, piss in a ditch with the rest of the crew. Yeah, I will film it. With all this virtue signaling coming from both the left and right, from individuals to corporations, you might be asking yourself one simple question. How the f did we get here? Virtue signaling, even if it wasn't called that, is quite old. They even complain about it in the Bible, when Jesus said you needed to shut the f up on Facebook about buying a stranger Starbucks. Well, I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically what he's saying. But our current virtue signaling hellscape may be, at least partially, the result of one industry, public relations, or PR. Ever since Ivy Lee, the founder of modern PR, first repaired the Rockefeller family's robber baron image through heavily slanted press releases and a highly choreographed sympathy tour through Colorado, the world wised up to the fact that a little positive publicity goes a long way. Of course, people maligned Lee as a hired slanderer and poisoner of public opinion. And maybe they had a point. Because here's the messed up thing, Wisecrack. A hundred years ago, Lee opened up the floodgates, and now the field of positive spin can be used to rehabilitate the image of just about anyone or anything, and that's where things get dark. To see what I mean, let's look at the messed up journey of the guy you love to hate, The Deep, aka Aquaman except he does sexual assault. After being booted from the Seven for sexually assaulting Starlight, The Deep spirals hard, eventually getting some time in the clanker for commandeering a kid's water park. I think water's supposed to be fun. Try swimming in the Mariana Trench, little idiots. When he's bailed out though, it's by the Church of the Collective, who in exchange for his bank account, agree to do some serious PR work to get him back into the Seven. To that end, the church makes the deep appear in some seriously cheesy infomercials and even focus test a wife for him. But I thought I got to choose. You do, and you're choosing Cassandra. Now, the running joke of the season is how truly pathetic the deep is and how willing he is to go along with a PR blitz that presents such a patently false image. But underneath the humor, we have to realize how fundamentally screwed up all this is. Through the persuasive dark arts of PR, The Deep, a repeat sexual offender and all around nearly regains his position in the most prestigious paramilitary organization in the world. Did you catch Malala Yousafzai's tweet? Called you a sweetheart. <laughs> well, she's a sweetheart. But if you think it's terrifying that PR can rehabilitate a piece of shit like The Deep, then you're going to love this next one. The Boy shows how PR and all its virtue signaling can even make Nazism look kosher. To understand what I mean, let's look at Homelander and his new boo, Stormfront. By understanding the ins and outs of PR, Stormfront is able to revitalize Homelander's flagging all-American brand. You don't need 50 million people to love you. You need 5 million people fucking pissed. You have fans. I have soldiers. In other words, Stormfront, in true Don Draper fashion, knows how to sell a message to the masses. Basically, Homelander takes all that patriotic virtue signaling he's known for and appends it to a violently xenophobic message. And the results are downright terrifying. One nation under God, remember? Yeah! Right before these godless, inhuman supervillains started pouring across our borders and dragging us down into their mud. Of course, it goes without saying that neither Homelander nor Stormfront cares about this supposed super terrorist threat. A threat, we might add, that was literally created by Homelander himself. Does it ever occur to you that a soup terrorist showing up exactly when we needed him to was pretty incredible coincidence? Instead, all this spin serves the purpose of a larger, darker message. A race war led by Ava Braun over here. They want to wipe us from this earth just because of the color of our skin. Really? It's called white genocide. See, Stormfront intuitively understands that if she wants to sell her vision of white is right, she needs to dress it up with all that classic American apple pie virtue signaling. Or in her own words, People love what I have to say. They believe in it. 
They just don't like the word Nazi. It's also interesting to consider that Stormfront's own brand of realness is just another cynical way to brand herself. While Vought might traditionally favor the more buttoned up approach of giving speeches with talking points, she prefers crafting a more unpolished brand, but a brand nonetheless, paying people to make memes and packaging people's bigotry. Oh, this is just the first batch. I'll have Logan punch up the fear. Logan? My meme queen. Now, the trouble with virtue signaling is that many sociologists and philosophers have said that basically everything we do is a performance. Whether you're going to church, pursuing a career, or getting a sweet new set of truck nuts, everything we do is filtered through how we think others will perceive our actions. But hey, as long as you're trending, right? If Starlight wants to do good and be recognized for it, it doesn't necessarily make her good deeds worthless. The problem, the boys wants to remind us, is when people weaponize good acts to distract from their evil acts. And with the world full of marketers and PR reps, it's often hard to tell the difference. So it's just business then, I. When, Mr. Butcher, in history, has it ever been about anything different? But what do you think, Wisecrack? Is the boys right? Can we even begin to decipher what's real anymore? And does it even matter? Smash that subscribe button like Homelander is. Okay, we can't show that. Don't forget to ring that bell. Huge thanks to all our patrons for your support. And as always, thanks for watching. Later.